Good morning. I've fully completed the leak branch of the Colden Canal. Um, I've returned back to the junction and today it's time to navigate the rest of the longer part of the Colden. And straight away there's three locks to do but so far it looks like they're in my favour so it should be quite fast going through. During dry periods, water was often taken from the Calden Canal to supply the main Trenton Mersey Canal. To solve this, a reservoir was built at Rudd Yard, and the leak branch was then constructed to feed both canals. However, the water needed to be high enough to supply the Trenton Mersey. This is why there are three locks at the junction, and why the canal passes under the leak branch at Frog Hall. The canal quickly passes out into lovely countryside and despite the rain, there are signs spring is on its way. At the heart of the 20th century, the canal traffic badly slumped due to a new railway line being built. With little use over the next 60 years, the Calden Canal gradually became unnavigable. However, after considerable effort by the Calden Canal Society, volunteers and the British Waterways Board, the canal was once again opened in 1974 and has remained a hidden gem ever since. Cheddleton there are two mills, one to grind flint for the pottery industry and one to grind corn. The neighbouring river Churnet has provided the water to mill here since the Middle Ages, but the present grand structures date from the period of the Industrial Revolution. Make sure you're not standing over the vent holes at the lock here. Just to the east of Bridge 44 is the preserved Cheddleton Railway Station. Having been saved from demolition, there's a museum room here detailing the history of the Churnet Valley Line. Heading towards Oak Meadowford Lift Bridge, which has its lifting gear again on the offside, I was very pleased to see it remains in the up position as default. Phew. The quarry that the canal was originally built for is spelt Calden, which is different to what the canal's name of Calden. This was due to a spelling mistake in the original act which was never corrected. So this is the end of my journey down the Calden Canal. It's been raining all day yesterday and it was raining the night before and this river isn't a huge river and I've been told that the levels can rise and, and drop quite drastically very quickly. Thank you very much, Mr. Pheasant. Now the river is in flood and um, it's so high that it's in the red marker, which indicates that you can't go on any further. So um, I've turned around here and I will head back to Stoke. I've thoroughly enjoyed coming on the, the Calden Canal, especially with the fact that it, it forks and you can go up on the, the leak side, which is quite high up. That reminded me a lot of the Monmouthshire and Brecon Canal and then down here on, on the, the rest of the journey, down in the valley. It runs past um, railway lines, lots and lots of walks around. 
It can be quite thin at times going through and under bridges. I've bumped into many a wall and my navigation has been tested, shall we say. But a really, really pretty canal. I've thoroughly enjoyed it and it's very peaceful, very quiet and very rural. You right down there, Mole? You all right? Come on then. I've still got a number of electrical episodes to come, as well as my travelling journeys and of course boat fit out. So if you've not already subscribed, please do, it doesn't cost you anything, and by clicking the bell icon you'll be notified about future releases. Until next time, see you later.